Welcome to Kabbalah and Chassidus Explained, number 37, and uh, Meditations and Prayer, number 12. <clears throat> Before we go further in the Siddur, I um, decided to give a few classes as in general concept of prayer, as introductions. Really, they belong before my uh, prayer classes. Uh, well, you'll excuse me for not doing this in order. Basically, the next uh, concept, the next part in the, in, in the Siddur prompted me to explain uh, deeper what prayer is about, although I did do that in the beginning, but there's much more to talk about. Um, and also, eventually, it's going to serve as an introduction to the next part of the Siddur we were holding. Okay, so we'll start with Derech Mitzvah Secha, which is a sefer written by Yitzhak Tzedek, the third Chabad Rebbe, the grandson of the Alter Rebbe, Balatanya. So right at the beginning of Sheresh Mitzvah Satfila, of the root of the Mitzvah of Prayer, I'm going to read a few words here. He says like this, that Hashem commanded us to pray to Him, so that when a person has a problem or a need, he should turn and ask from God Almighty Himself, alone, just God. He should help him for this. And this is of the roots of faith. And through this, he will, he will know and understand that Hashem is Baruch, God Almighty, is alone the one that rules the world, takes care of the world, and takes care of every creature by divine providence in detail. And only He has the ability to help. So we have here the, uh, basically, obviously he, he brings from other sources from other sages. So we have here the concept that the mitzvah of prayer is for a person to understand that only Hashem, only the Creator Himself could really help him. Okay? We have Rambam also, the beginning of the beginning of Hilchas uh, Tefillah, the laws of prayer. Sorry. So, in the beginning of the laws of prayer, you have like this. I'm going to quote a few words. Right in the beginning, it's a positive mitzvah to pray every day, as it says, You should serve Hashem, the Lord your God. Now, what does this mean? Serve, serve your Lord your God is such a general term. What does it mean? How do you serve Him? From the oral tradition from Sinai, we have learned this. So worshiping, this serving God Almighty is referring to prayer. Shanemar, as the verse says, and this coming verse we say in the Shema every day, in the second chapter of Shema. You should serve Him with all your heart. What is the service of the heart? This is prayer. If you want to give a description of prayer, it's Aved Shabalev, it's a service of the heart. So, when a person prays, we Jews pray three times a day. Every time we pray, we become closer to God Almighty. Every time we, we pour out our heart, we pray with our heart to God Almighty, we become closer to Him. It's like we said about the praises in the past, we explained all these praises, is for us, we praise God for us to be inspired, for us to be inspired by God Almighty. 
by God Almighty's greatness. Since Hashem, since the Creator is hidden, you cannot see God Almighty, you cannot see His, His energy, the creative energy in, in, in all and everything, even living things, me, you, animals, you cannot see openly that it's God creating and giving, giving, giving them life. We understand, we think about it, etc. We study, we meditate, but it's God is hidden in this world. From time to time, people witness miracles. They do. There are miracles. I know people that witness supernatural miracles. Um, but, um, but that is something you see from time to time. But in the regular nature of things, day, day to day, nature covers over the fact that there's a creator. So God is hiding from us. And it's it's our work, he wants us to work on this relationship, on this consciousness, to bring God Almighty into our hearts, into our minds. So prayer helps us do that. So we just mentioned the Rambam brings our sages that say, that service of the heart is prayer. We have a very interesting talk of the Rebbe in Melchut Sichis, volume 22, page 116-118, that he, he calls this Rambam, and the Maimonides, and he quotes from another uh, source, halachic source, that, a pr that prayer is that a person should be mischanen u mispal b'chol yem. Mischanen will explain in a minute. Mispal means pray. What does mischanen mean? Mischanen means, there's a few ways that you can translate, explain it. Entreat, beg, beseech. In Yiddish it's called betenzach. In Russian it's prasitz, prasitza. To beg. God Almighty, that is a service of the heart. That's a function of the heart. To beseech, to be mischanen, to pray. That is a function of the heart. And therefore he says, the halacha, the Rebbe says here, the halacha is that a person has to take his mind off A person must take his mind off all other things, all other thoughts before he prays. As brought down Shechan Aruch. The Code of Jewish Law. Rambam and Code of Jewish Law. Why? Because he's supposed to focus on the prayer. Um, when I mentioned before that the Rebbe brings these words Meschan and Mispalel, he quotes actually a, a book called Beis Elikim. Anyway, so since a person is supposed to beg and beseech, it's a, it's a service of the heart, therefore he has to get ready himself for it. Therefore, before prayer, he has to meditate, meaning taking off his thoughts of everything else, and think about the fact that he was going to be talking now to the infinite creator. And if there is no element of beseeching, of begging, of entreating, of tchino, requesting, praying, He's just saying the words because you know he's used to it every day. He says it in the prayer book, he reads the prayer book. Then he says, no, there is no, that is not prayer. The, the element of prayer is beseeching, begging God Almighty. That is the element of prayer, the heart. You can't beg without your heart. Begging is a, fun, is a function of the heart. 
That's what begging means. So if your heart is not involved, there's no prayer. As is not talking chefts at dibur, is it can fill up. There is no there is no object of prayer. Prayer is not saying words. Prayer is begging and beseeching. Your heart must be involved. And there's a beautiful story about this that that demonstrates this important point. Story of the Balshemtiv that was once praying on Yom Kippur in his synagogue with his students around him and other Jews. And this one year on Yom Kippur, he was really praying with all his might and very dramatic and very much feeling. And he was crying. It was literally, it tore your heart if you would hear that. Especially when they re- reached the final prayer, the fifth prayer of, of Yom Kippur, which is the most intense prayer in the Elah, the closing prayer. It became even more, more dramatic. The crying became even more heartbroken. And the close students to the Basham understood that their Rebbe feels that there's something, there's something going on in heaven. There's some terrible decree on Jews somewhere that he's trying to, to nullify. So they were also praying with great emotion. And then, so these were the students of the Baal Shem Tov. And then the people around the students, the rest of the people in the synagogue also, they, when they saw the prayer of the Baal Shem Tov, the great Tzaddik, the founder of Hasidus, great holy man. And uh, his, his students, they saw the Baal Shem Tov and how, how the Baal Shem Tov and the students were praying, so they, their heart was also broken. And they're also crying out to God Almighty. Suddenly, in this whole drama, they hear the strange sound. Kukuriku! Father in heaven, have mercy. What? Kukuri, what is this? Uh, he's imitating a rooster in a synagogue on Yom Kippur in such a dramatic way. Who is this? They turn around, and some of the people recognize this, this, this kid, like a young boy, a young teenager. And they show, some people are showing him. The door, go out. You can, you know, make these strange sounds in a synagogue on such a holy day. Who is this kid? He was a son of a simple villager. He was a shepherd. And for quite a few years, he would come to synagogue of the Baal Shem Tov on holidays. He didn't know how to pray. But he would just listen to the cantor and look at him. He says, I'm not going out. Your God is also my God. And there's this commotion. And, and the fellow in charge of, of, of order in the synagogue called the Shamish, he saw this whole commotion. I made a blessing before. He started to calm the people down. Let him stay, let him stay. He stayed. Just a few moments later, the Basham to finish the prayer. And he's all overjoyed. The Baal Shem Tov is singing happy songs. Well, just a few moments ago, there was terrible crying. Everybody finished davening. Later, that night after Yom Kippur, the Baal Shem Tov was sitting with his students and he told them what happened. In heaven, there was this terrible decree on a certain Jewish community. When I saw this, said the Baal Shem Tov, a very spiritual, mystical, holy person who's able to see what's going on in the spiritual realms. When I saw this, I tried to pray with all my might to nullify this decree. That teenager, that boy, saw that this is a serious prayer. This is not the ordinary. All this whole drama of everyone crying and screaming and praying and begging and beseeching in the men's section, the women's section, had a big effect on him. And his heart broke as well. When he called that kukuriku, this was his expression from his whole heart. That's what broke the decree. That's what nullified the decree. Bashanta said the calling of his kukuriku, which was from the whole heart, broke the decree. Unquote. So 
we have from here something very special. In other words, this kid, that's what he knew. He knew that he couldn't express, that, that's the way he expressed with some uh, interesting boy. That's the way he expressed himself. But, this, but he didn't even read Hebrew. But it was from all his heart, from his whole heart. Mikol Halev, it was from his whole heart. And that's what did it. So sincerity, heartfelt, this is necessary. This is a main ingredient in prayer. As we say the Tehillim, it says in Tehillim, we say it also a few times a day. It's called Ashrei, the famous Ashrei. And we actually explained this verse a few classes back. We explained it a little different, according to something that I'll tell in Tanya. But uh, it says the Shivim Ponam Latera, there are 70 ways how you can understand everything in Torah. So it's not a, it's not a contradiction. So anyway, we're talking about Karav Hashem al Chalkeirav. This is in Tehillim, in Psalms, chapter 145, verse 18. Karav Hashem al Chalkeirav, Hashem is close to all that call him, to all that call him in truth. Says the Radak, one of the great commentators. Amazing thing, beautiful thing. Karev Hashem al Hashem is close to all that, to all that, what means to all that call him? That's probably what, make, what, uh, that's probably why he writes this. He says, from any nation, meaning Jewish or not, Karev Hashem al Hashem is close to all that call him. That's probably what compels the Radak to write that, because what means to all, all that call him? Even if you're not Jewish, you don't have to be Jewish for this. God created you as well. From whatever nation you are, as long as you're calling him with truth, that your mouth and heart are equal. Truth. Call him with truth. One of the... Um, large themes of prayer, that one of the big themes of prayer is to say thank you. Actually, the first thing a Jew says when he wakes up, when he opens up his eyes in the morning when he's still in bed, is thanks. There's a lot of thank you in, in prayer. And it's very important. We have today, we're living in 2022. We're living in such a blessed time. So many, so many ways. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to spend a lot of time now. I'm just going to give a few, example, a few examples. You, know, you can actually have bread every day, chicken, fish. A <laughs> hundred years ago, only the rich were able to afford chicken every day. You didn't have to worry about putting bread, in, literally putting bread on the table. 99% of the people, 95%, 98 you know, those living in civil in the United States, you're actually in the winter. You don't have to go outside in 20 degrees when you have to go to the bathroom and go into you know and, and use some pit. You'll excuse me. You have a in your house, you have a room. You actually it's a toilet, and we take these things for granted. But for thousands of years, people did not live like this. Yeah, we have cars today. You can sit on your couch and order Amazon and get it a few hours later. I mean, this is. Uh, you know, Uber Eats, whatever. I think the comforts, the, the, uh, I'm not going into there how much blessing that is, whatever. But the point is, sometimes people get lazy from that. But the point is that we live such better lives. That medicine, medicine, in the last hundred years, revolutionized, I mean, revolutionized longevity, people live much longer, people live much healthier lives, etc., 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 etc. We have so many things to thank for, to be thankful for. And sometimes we're ungrateful. And it's a lot of this is up to the person himself. It's up to the person himself to see what he has, what he or she has, and focus on that, or to focus what he or she does not have. But gratitude, let's always remember this, gratitude equals happiness so always thank God Almighty for what you have then this praising God that we spoke before 
Why do we praise God so much? It's for us to have a deeper recognition and feeling and appreciation of God Almighty's greatness and kindness. And then in Shemona Esra, in the uh, Amidah, we ask for our needs. We ask Hashem for health, for livelihood, etc. And sometimes we wait for an answer. Sometimes we don't get an answer. Sometimes we feel like our prayers are not answered. So it could be that we think that this is what we need, or we feel oh, this is the right time. Sometimes it's not the right time. Sometimes if we get to what we ask for, and that time that we ask for, sometimes it can make problems. So sometimes it'll be delayed. It's going to come to us in, the, in, the, in, the, in a better time. But sometimes we really do not understand why God Almighty doesn't answer us. Well, someone, God forbid, uh, needs health. It's always the right time to be healthy, right? So sometimes we do not understand. We don't understand God's ways. He's infinite. The one God is infinite, and we are finite. We cannot really, cannot really understand Him. But we still request. Very important to request. There's a beautiful story, also the Basham Tov the founder of Hasidus. This is actually a little humorous, but uh, can stay patient. So the Baal Shem Tov travels with his students, comes to this like, very poor looking hut home, knocks on the door, a Jewish guy opens up, he sees this great rabbi and his students. Please come in, come in. They see he's very poor. Husband, wife, children, very, very poor. And he tells them, we're hungry, please give us what to eat. Sure, sure, sure. And he gives them, and he gives them, and they eat it all up. The Basham Tov eats it all up. <laughs> we need more, we need more. <laughs> very strange, very strange, funny. And so he gives them more, he's looking, he's searching, he doesn't have, he doesn't, he's looking, if I, if I found something, here, something there, that cooks up. Again, basically they emptied out the house. There wasn't much in the, from the first place, but they emptied out in the, the house. Uh, the, the students are wondering. They, they, they don't dare to ask the Baal Shem Tov, you know, in front of the house. But later they were wondering what the... So either they asked the Baal Shem Tov later when they left, or the Baal Shem Tov saw their wondering, or just told them. Tell them, look, this person was a very pious person. There was a treasure waiting for him. He, there was a treasure. He was supposed to become very wealthy. But there was one problem. He never really asked. He never asked God. I mean, he said the words, but he was always, always happy with what he has. What are we going to feed the children tonight? His wife would ask him. Hashem will help. What are we going to do tomorrow? How are we going to, we were going to get wood for, to, to warm the house. We have no money for wood. Hashem is going to help. He never really begged God Almighty for livelihood. He was always thankful for what he has. The Basham Tov saw this. There's this wealth waiting for him, this great blessing. But he never asked for it. He never asked for livelihood. It with a real heart. You know, we say it every day. But he never really asked. He just said the words. That night, his children went to sleep hungry. And they were crying. And they couldn't sleep well. And he couldn't sleep well. And his, and his wife said, what are you doing? What is this? You gave them everything. He said, Hashem is going to help. What do you mean Hashem is going to help? Look at the children. They're crying. They're, they, they, they're literally hungry. Who heard of such a thing? She really gave him a hard time. And he really, he was very pressured and broken. Next morning when he came to synagogue, you know, he shed a few tears. I think that's the way the story goes. He shed a few tears and he, he asked God Almighty to help him, to send him livelihood. Why do I have to be so poor? Why, why aren't, can't I feed my family with dignity? Whatever he said. But he prayed, really prayed for livelihood. And immediately, within a day, a few days or something, he became extremely wealthy. Something happened, whatever. So it's important to ask. 
So as I mentioned before, I think I mentioned that we Jews pray three times a day, and every time we get closer to Hashem as we do it. Now, since not everyone could express themselves very well in words, it's been already for a long time, over 2,000 years, that we have a certain prayer book, a certain text that we pray. However, you could pray in any language. You could pray in your own words. Pray to God in your own words. The best is to combine the both. Combine them too. Yeah, there's a prayer book, but in the Amidah, there are two places. Look in the prayer book, you'll see some prayer books have it. It's basically in, in uh, Rafa'inu, Barachal. In, 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 before, the end of the, before the end of the blessing, there's a place in the arts called Sadurim, you could see there's even like two dots, or one or two dots, uh, little circles those, that indicate where you have a spot where you can insert your own prayer. I think in the arts called Sidr, it's uh, in the prayer for health and in the general prayer of Shema Kaleinu, which is general, listen to our voice, listen to our voice of prayer. But there are spots, I'm not going to go into all the details now, but there are spots in Shemona Esther that you could insert your personal prayer. So there can be a combination of the text of our sages and your personal prayer. It's definitely better to pray in Hebrew, but to really, you can, if you didn't learn Hebrew yet, try to learn, but meanwhile, you could definitely pray in any language, English, Russian, whatever it is. Thanks for listening. All the best. And may God Almighty listen to our prayers and fulfill our requests in uh, revealed good.